Good morning, everyone. This is David Delp, Creative Director at Pilot Fire. Today, we're going to be talking about how to stay focused on what's best about the holidays. Holidays, as you know, are often joyous and rejuvenating and all of that, but they can also be very confusing emotionally and overwhelming and sometimes even quite painful. Personally, I am almost always struggling with my priorities during the, the holidays, as many of you might be. And my goal today is to give you some tools for making good choices. Now, I grew up on the East Coast <clears throat> with loving Protestant parents, and the end of the December as a kid was like the best thing in the world. We ate lots of sugary treats. Grandma was around. <clears throat> Excuse me, I still have a lingering cough here. Uh, there were whispers and, you know, secrets as people were planning surprises, and best of all, there was no school. Now, we had lots of great traditions. We, we got great gifts, and these are the types of things that we only got on Christmas morning or on our birthdays. And some of our traditions included our annual venture into the woods to, to end a tree's life. And uh, what you're seeing here is me and my family um, demonstrating the point of Christmas. Back then we would, at a given time, we would say, okay, everybody, let's see what the point of Christmas is. And right now we're all pointing at my brother, at least most of us are. I'm pointing at the bottom of my shoe, and that's the point of Christmas. Um, and it, it was about this time also, I was around 14, that it became clear that my, my mom and dad could hardly stand each other. And that's when my childhood bliss around the holidays started to crack. And when they got divorced, our gatherings got really, really tense. And then I went to college. Right, And that opened up my eyes to all sorts of ideas about how crappy holidays, or at least Christmas, are. And then I married a feminist Jew, which confused everything about the holiday season. <clears throat> By the time I had a kid, I had no sense of my own priorities, just a lot of expectations about how great the holidays should be. And this picture right here is, is, was no longer possible. And I knew I needed to start creating my own picture. Fortunately, as my daughter started caring about the holidays, um, my second wife jumped in with some very simple steering instructions. She had her own ideas and, and set what seemed to be a very, very low bar. In her view, things are pretty good if, you know, she would say things like, things are pretty good if nobody is drunk or crying or hitting someone. And, you know, she'd say things like, I'm happy if no windows get broken. So she, in the, in, the, in the card game of family dysfunction, she was holding some serious face cards. But her, her steering instructions were simple. Share a nice breakfast. Open a few presents. Go help someone else. And this checklist right here, this simple checklist, served me for many years. But things keep changing. And so I keep examining this question about the holidays, which is why we are here today. And I wanted to tell you, this is a short webinar. And today our goal is to talk about what is the problem. We need to talk about the problem. Um, and the solution, right? It's easy. Pay attention to what's important. Simple enough. Uh, I've done some research online and found some of your ideas, and um, we'll talk about those. And then I'm going to offer Pilot Fire to, four tools from Pilot Fire: how uh, the holidays being special circumstances, and because they're extra difficult, these tools may help you. I hope uh, pay attention in a new way. So, what's the problem? The holidays are special, as I said, and they're extra difficult in many regards. There are too many choices. Loneliness is so available to many of us. And uh, work and play are always in, in competition. And this is, you know, our family and friends can act especially weird 
because we're acting weird. We have uh, old expectations and habits that sideswipe us sometimes. And so what about you? Uh, Emily, it was, said that she started holidays, family time with mental to-do lists that are unfinished. So many of us come to um, these holidays without actually being able to set aside our work. I, I definitely had that. And the other one, I hate the feeling of obligation surrounding holiday gift giving, as well as the commercial frenzy to buy, buy, buy. I totally have that. My stuff, I want to make holidays unrealistically awesome for my daughter. I, now, you heard my story. I assume that uh, you can tell from that why I might have this unreasonable expectations. But I also have a personal one. I just get anxious shopping. I just don't like going to shopping malls, and I struggle with anxiety sometimes. Um, and then finally, I forget to play. I love to work, actually. I love to work, but I love to play. So this is the solution. Pay attention to what's important. Now, attention comes in various forms, right? We can make plans for next year. We can make plans for next week. And ultimately, even though we make plans, it comes to what we pay attention to now. Because now is really all we have. You hear that? This is one of the best hints, is just to remember to breathe. Isn't it funny just mentioning breathing? And just breathing it extra <laughs> loud. I'm trying not to sound like Darth Vader here getting over my cold. I'm actually going to stand up. And if you want to stand up, ah, too, I'm going to stand up. And I'm going to stretch a little bit. So. Um, let's continue on here, and uh, I, I want to go to some of the ideas other people have had. Somebody suggested planning some days off in a small retreat at the end of the month, and that's great. Make a commitment to yourself and other people by, like, buying plane tickets. Exercising was something that David suggested. Um, that always works for me, but uh, can you remember to do it when a lot of other things are going on? Here's a really good one, just to pause for a moment, to take my family in, to notice what they're doing, to notice what we've all gone, that we've all gone to so much trouble to get together. And Emily is one that suggested just breathing, which makes a big difference. And this one is tough, just to be in the moment and enjoy it without thinking about what you're not doing. Giovanna had a really, really good, um, idea. I liked hers. Lazy days where breakfast can take an hour or two, eating in PJs, walking on the beach to collect shells. What's great about this is just having a vision of what it could be. And there's one big hint that if you are still buying gifts for people or figuring out what to gift them, I've heard this a lot, that choosing gifts of experiences like tickets to a nice event um, are generally things that make people happier than uh, things. So here's the question. Even when we know what's important, how do we make good choices? I'm going to talk about uh, something very fundamental to uh, pilot fire, and that's the attention wheel. Now, this wheel is the, the cycle of conscious decision-making. It's how we return to self-discovery. It's how we try new things. It's how we stay awake while we act in the world. And it's simple. Now, the pen is at the top because I talk a lot about planning. So you make a plan. You do it. You pause and reflect. That's a fermata sign from music. And you repeat that process. Now, I know it sounds really basic, but a lot of people forget to make plans. They spend a lot of time just doing, doing, doing. 
and they don't pause and reflect, or they make plans. They're always making plans and they don't actually act. So this cycle see, keeps, us, uh, keeps us in the flow and keeps us conscious about what we're doing. Now this cycle, when it happens dozens and dozens of times during the day, we make a choice, we act on it, and if we can pause, just breathe, just breathe, and feel what happened as a result of our action, then we can make a new choice. Now what's great about this cycle, I know it seems very basic, but what's great is that when it spins fast, when the cycle spins so fast you don't notice, that's when you fall into flow. And I, my definition of flow is just that flow is losing yourself doing something you care about. And it's that, that's what we all want, isn't it? That's the goal in life. And then the holidays, why not make a special effort to get there? So here are some tools for that. Tool number one, roles and goals. I talk about this a lot. It's one of the basic tools of pilot fire. And during the holidays, we have different roles that move to the leading, our leading parts. These are some of the roles that I play. Um, and these are the ones that I'm going to emphasize over the, the break. It turns out that I'm going to also need to be making some money, but if I set aside some time to pay attention to these four roles and think about how do I want to be my best in each of them, I can actually set goals for each of these. Now, a goal is just a stated attention. I know it sounds nerdy to set goals as a father or as a playmate. All it means is that when you make a goal, you're just making a, a reminder of what you think is important. So I'm gonna use me as an example. I'm hoping this will help you see how you play different roles too. So for instance, I set a goal just by saying, as a father, I want to. And these are the things that I want to do during, um, during the holiday. I want to get my daughter a good gift, good enough gift, not the perfect gift. I want to make Christmas morning cozy. I want to cook something great together. I want to go see three movies in one day. She loves doing that. I want us to go skiing. Um, she does too. And I want to practice stick shift. She's learning how to drive. Now, it sounds funny, again, to prioritize these, but in prioritizing them, something comes very clear. That if I focus on the skiing trip, a lot of great things happen. If we go skiing together, we get lots of time together, and there's no pressure to try to make it great, because we'll just have lots of time together, and it's all play. And really, it takes care of that top one, too. It's, it's really the best kind of gift. So then I ask as a teacher, what can I do? And this was an awesome thing for me to do because what I figured out is that even though I need to finalize the new course materials, which you'll hear about in a little bit, if I model for my students what it means to take a break, that means maybe I can not write those four articles that I was planning to write in two weeks. So that's an awesome by, byproduct of this prioritization. I do need to spend some time working on making some money. And I looked at this list and I thought very hard about what the most important thing to do was. And I need to really spend some good time editing the video of my student experiences. So I know at least what is the most important thing for me. Now, tool number two are the don't lists. Now this looks like a do list, all those things that I just wrote down, but it's not. This is what I call a don't list, at least a don't yet list. The don't list are the things that I made top priority. And what, this sounds like a simplistic tool, but it's really important. Prioritizing what's most important leads to this do list. And it's subtle. If you try it out, you'll also find it's very pow powerful. Once you make these your do list, you've set aside your don't list. The process is very simple. Like I said, the first step is to write down the stuff you want to do. 
then prioritize what's the most important, then write a separate list of the most important. That's your do list. And here's something, something silly to try, but it works. Before you put away the don't list, just look at it and say, I'm not doing these things now, thank you, and put them away until you do your do list. That's tool number two. Tool number three is awesome. My mother taught this to me. <clears throat> she used to ask us, now this is great for family, crazy family stuff, and it might be good for you too, Ben, and dealing with your own craziness, your own robotic behavior that makes you want to do things like, you know, eat donuts all day. Mom used to ask us to mention applesauce whenever we saw her talking to her mother. Now, during the holidays, I mostly enjoyed gra having Granny around. You know, she was really old. I'd ask her about, like, how she felt when the Wright brothers <laughs> came out with their news. But to my mom, Granny was a passive-aggressive bitch, and it drove her crazy. And for some reason, Mom thought applesauce was hilarious. So she just would ask us to mention it whenever she saw the two of them together. And the more random the context, the better. Like. Like, you know, mom, the car won't start. It's got applesauce or, you know, take five of those applesauces and lay them side by side. And it would just crack her up and it would be a trigger and it would make her change how she felt about the situation. And again, the method is very simple. Choose a trigger word or a visual cue of some sort. In fact, I wrote a little bit more about this online in one of my posts. So just check out Triggered Reset. Um, but when you're triggered, take a very specific act. For my mom, it was easy. She just cracked up. And here's the key. Practice ahead of time. And if you can, get other people to help you. Did it work? Did I trigger you? Tool number four is called Scraps from Last Year. Now, I've written about this also, but it's, and it's, again, it's simple. Um, as you go through the holidays, as you're separating with your friends and thinking about the bright moments of last year, just write down what you appreciated about it. Write down things you accomplished, what you're proud of, on little slips of paper. But also write down what embarrassed you and what caused you some grief. When did you make a bad choice? and write these on little slips of paper and tuck them away. I like to burn them eventually. Now, as you let go of the past year, let yourself daydream a little bit too about what you want in the next year, but don't, don't sweat it for now. Like these little scraps of paper, write them down and put them away, and there'll be a time to focus on their, your new dream in the new year. Holidays are special times. I hope I've given you a few new tools to help you stay focused on what's best about them. I know for myself that these next few days will be challenging. And if I stay conscious and present, they will also be full of lovely, quiet surprises. And that is what I wish for you all. <laughs>